Okay, so we're going to respond to some of the comments that I've gotten from previous posts. First of all, it's very reassuring when you hear the comments, but I absolutely should not have uh, muted the guy out because I wanted to post, I wanted to actually screenshot what this guy said to me, okay? Clearly, this guy has some serious problems. He told me that Jesus was not, he, he's not real, that he's a transgender God. See, I, we're okay. We're doing okay here. You know what I mean when I say that sometimes when people say things, um, well, they said, he said that Jesus is the devil. Okay. Well, okay. Let me see something here. There's different religions that believe differently about who Jesus is. Well, I'm just going to go based on what the Bible states. It says Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Okay, so when all these other religions have different depictions of who Jesus is, because I, I'm pretty sure what I, from my understanding, the Quran states that Jesus is a prophet. He's not God and King. Allah is God and King, but Jesus is just a prophet. That's not what our Bible says. Jesus is God and King over that. Okay, that he was sent from the Father to come and rescue humanity from the second death, which is hell. Okay. A lot of Catholics believe that there's a purgatory, like you have to go through some kind of hellish experience. Maybe that explains child abuse. Anyway, so back in the Catholic Church, I mean, let's just talk about what it, what's going on here. Um, other comments, I'm just, I find this very interesting. This is why we're going to talk about that, because it makes you wonder. Go ahead and tell me what your comment section says when somebody goes off and says, tries to correct us. Okay, good luck there. Have a great life. I really, next time, we're just going to do this. This is, here's, here's what the demon looks like, okay, in the invisible. Because your eyes don't have the ability to see what's in the physical, okay. Physically, when they talk about a supernatural experience, so everybody's had some kind of supernatural experience, okay. It's whether you're aware of it or not, okay. That's the difference. Because the carnal man, the flesh, the fleshly side of you, because you're both God and if you're, if you're a human being, you're part human and spirit, okay? Your body, mind, and spirit. Okay, we can get that. Because me talking right now is my spirit talking to you. Okay, that's something that's within. When anyone passes away, that voice is gone. So whatever comes out of you, you out of your mouth, is something that is within you. Okay, so that's the spirit part of you. And some believe, and I, be, I would say this, that the Holy Spirit resides somewhere in your belly, okay? is supposed to be a certain part of your body. Now, some people in Eastern philosophy believe something totally different. They have a philosophy of chakra. And those who believe in Eastern philosophy or play yoga, they, they, they understand the chakra. They call it the serpentine spirit. If you don't understand that, do your homework. This is, where, this is just a brief overview. Well, let's just correct the record. Jesus is Lord and King. I'm not going to get into this with somebody that doesn't read. He told me to re go read my Bible. I've read my Bible. And I'm going to keep reading my Bible. But nowhere in my Bible does it say that Jesus is the devil, okay? Now, I know there's been a little bit of an internal debate whether the word Jesus itself is, uh, a wrong, is a wrong word for it. Let's just assume for, let's just say he's a Jewish Messiah right now, which that's the case. Then it's Yeshua, Yeshua. Jesus is been used and I don't think we're going to get into this debate whether Jesus was not Jesus every time we speak the name of Jesus whatever is coming against you when we say but for the blood of Jesus protects you whatever fear is around you it goes I know this you go ahead and test the Lord and see if he's true that if you're afraid of something, you start yelling out Jesus 20 times, you're no longer afraid. Anyone that has anxiety, I've taught some of you, keep saying the name of Jesus out loud. and Watch how you'll calm down eventually. You say Jesus 25 different times. You have to believe in the power in the name of Jesus. You have to believe that his power, his authority, he, he's given you the authority as a Christian to tread on serpents. You will not fear anything because the word is Jesus. I come in the name of Jesus that when the Lord said, 
no one could go to the Father but through him. You had to go through him to go directly to God, okay? Because obviously, if we get into this discussion, it would take a little time. That's what the Bible states in John 1, 2, 3, and probably the good part of John, okay? So I just want to respond to this, these type of comments I get, that Jesus is the, the devil, Mm -mm. No, Lord. No, 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 no. That's a confused man because the devil has whispered stuff in your ear, making you believe that he has something against you. He doesn't. This is the problem. This is the spiritual war in which we're in to identify what is a spirit. When, when you're a spiritual person, you understand you test all things to be true. And when you speak the name of Jesus plenty of times and you've been having a really bad day and you know there's something around you, there's a presence around you, you can tell, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Those things have no authority over you. It's the power and authority which we're given. If you know, you understand your authority in Jesus Christ, you're never, ever, ever going to have a fear in a world to worry about. He given you that authority because the Holy Spirit is in that. Now listen. Do we have some areas in our life to work out? Yes, absolutely. He's always doing a work in us. That, that's a daily thing. I don't ever want to get caught up in some of the things that got caught up in the past. I want to walk a different way. I, I choose this day and whom I'm serving. And I'm serving Jesus Christ. And as far as I'm concerned, if anyone has any concerns about that, you should read your Bible. Absolutely. I, I encourage that. You need to be picking up your Bible and you got to be picking up your armor. You got to be picking up your cross daily. This is this is the world in which you live in that rejects anything that's good. When when the, woe is not to anyone. Oh, there's a word I'm sorry. Woe is to that person who calls good evil and evil good. I'm speaking right to you. You have no idea what you just said. That's totally uh, that's backwards is what it is. But that is scriptural. What you just did, you just, you really stated what the scripture even said. Woe unto the man who calls good evil and evil good. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. Now, Jesus is Lord and he's good and he stated in his word. I got to stand on what he says, not what I say, not my interpretation, not in somebody else's doctrinal difference. What we know about Jesus Christ. Because it's the power of the blood of Jesus that has set us free. We are no longer shackled. You live, you're, you, as long as you live in this world, you're under his authority. You're subject to him first, then you go serve. Because otherwise, you should not be serving anybody. And this is for anyone new Christian. I know there's a lot of people. It's not wise to do that. You still have to grow up. I've often told some of you, if you don't know the answer, it's because you're not ready. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to be doing anything charitable or anything unless you're ready. That is the Lord spoke to that. He said, put your gifts down and apologize to each other. Don't be giving out any gifts to anybody and doing any, all these nice things. It's not works but that you're saved. The Lord even said, you better forgive one of each other before you ever go doing nice things and, and making yourself look like you're, you know, you're, you're righteous in man's eyes. A lot of people pat people on the back and say, oh, you did such a good job. But if you have a, a bone to pick with somebody, you're really not right with the Lord in this area. So he wants you to get that right first. Then he says, go ahead and do your thing. Okay? When that woman that touched his mantle and she was hemorrhaging for, eight, I believe, seven years, all she because she got to the point there's some problems in your life that have brought you to the point that all you had to do is touch, just touch his name. That I think our problems is a, is a form of persevering through it. But by the time you arrived to that point, all she had to do is touch his hem and she was healed. That's what happens when you go through something. There are things that I often thought to, like you have to go, come to the end of yourself to recognize that he is the only way for you. There is a life and death situation you encounter. Um, maybe police officers. I, I talked to um, a, a Navy SEAL officer, okay? He told me, he goes, I know that we were in the presence of the God, of God when there was a f lightning flash and they were supposed to be on, like there were supposed to be a tr thousands of troops heading into this region. And they were very concerned because they were afraid that this was it for them. 
There were a lot of guys going on this mission. And if it hadn't been there was four or five witnesses that saw this, this would just be bluff. But three different commanders and officers and, and a couple other, and, and even the president at the same time, experienced something all at once. And there was a flash of lightning that hit the very area that they were supposed to go down. And they were supposed to go to this mission in this very dangerous part of this region. The president calls and he says, did you just hear what happened? He goes, yeah. The other commander is calling. He goes, a, a, a bolt of lightning just hit the area. Meaning they were supposed to go into that area and clean out something. But apparently in, in, in God's good grace, he didn't allow these guys to go on this mission. He took care of business. It's a pretty nice story when you think in terms like, uh, I'm going to have the Lord get ahead of this. And I'm not worried about these things. Because if I have a job or I have, I, I have bills that need to be paid, I know the Lord is going to provide. Now, have I been in a fickle? Have I wrestled with some things spiritually? Yes. It's very hard to not to, to have to depend on the Lord when I know there's some things I want to be able to do, but it wasn't my time. And that's very difficult for somebody who's used to paying their bills and doing things, relying and trusting in Jesus. That takes a little, um, well, let me say this, this, this is like how the Lord stretches us out. He teaches us in different ways. We have to trust him. That's not easy to do, but I have learned to trust the Lord. Okay. I'm so used to trusting my own things my, my, my own thinking. My own thinking has got me into some trouble at times too. But as I grew up and as I've come to know the Lord in a different kind of way, there are different ways to understand who he is in your life. He works out some areas in your life. You're not even aware he's working it out. You're not even aware that he's working on you. You're not even aware he might be working on your friend or family that you've been praying for. That's the kind of trust when you, it's not a narrow view of the Lord. It's, it's a broader view. It's narrow is the gate that which leads to life because a lot of people out there have this broader view of things. Okay. When it comes to who, who God and King is. That's a broader, there's so many other views and opinions. There's so many of them that you almost need one to direct your path. And that's why you're always supposed to, you're supposed to exercise some caution. You're not supposed to take everybody's advice. You're not supposed to take everything you hear as here, um, as the, you know, Bible. You're supposed to be able to discern in the times you live in, discern the things that people say, because you know that people say things, they might not know the whole story, it uh, includes us. That's why you always have to exercise caution before you go out and tell somebody something because you're responsible for giving people bad advice. That's why I say just be very selective and be very discerning where you get your advice. Okay, you can't take that advice as your own. You just, you have to grow up enough to recognize that there are things that people say that might, might be true, might not be true, okay? But you can say, thank you, I'll, I'll take that in consideration and compartmentalize it somewhere. On to the next thing. The comments like that illustrate exactly what I've been saying. I'm not saying that I have to point out the obvious, but when somebody says that to me, I have to point this out. Okay, do I want to go on and on about this every day? I guess I might have to. But... It just goes to show you that your faith has to be stronger than that. You have to trust the Lord in this area. Like I'm thinking about, I mean, I've been sweating some things out. Okay. I admit it. That's called dealing with some things. Okay. And all the things I worried about, a lot of times I would get mad and I had no business getting mad because I was not trusting the Lord. Again, relying on that carnal thinking, carnal man. This is where we get in trouble. And that's why I always know that we surrender those things because always the Lord is good. He said, I have plans to not harm you, but prosper you. And that a lot of us don't know what that goodness feels like. After a while, you get used to all these bad things happen. Yes, yeah, sometimes things are going to happen. But if you trust in Jesus, which I like to think that a lot of us do, you know his plan. Somehow, someway, he's going to bring you through and there's something you're going to learn from it. If, you, if you're walking with the Lord, he's always working things out for you. He's always working things out for all of us out here. He has a, his plan is so much bigger than our small-minded view of the world, okay? And we do. Some of us are very narrow-minded. You have to take a broader view. I know that some people get this wrong. There is a broader view in which they say, there is, there's a way that seems right, but it's foolishness, okay? There's a lot of things that seem okay at the time. 
And then when you, guess what? When you wake up the next day, you're like, uh, I wish I never said that. That's called regret, by the way. So you have to be careful what you say and who you say to. And as far as I'm concerned, there are people that say things, and I get it. You don't, that's why you're careful in what you say, okay? Be very careful what you say to who you say. Like kids are very impressionable. That's why I always say, just be careful how you say, you know, think that through. That's why they always say, why don't we uh, sort this out before we discuss this? Because it may not be the time to discuss a problem. There, there's a time and a place for everything, okay? Say somebody's out to dinner and they have big plans and they're all excited. That's probably not the time to bring up, like, the bills that you that you have to pay for tomorrow. You can wait. You have to sometimes sit on things. That's why anyone has insight and knowledge and wisdom. Sometimes you have to sit on some things for a while. Now, we get to that conversation, to that time. I said, can we talk, like, whenever you have some free time? About, and, uh, you know, don't leave anything secretive. Just say, I need to speak to you about this bill. And can we set up an appointment? That way, you're not taking anyone by surprise. It's not, it's like, uh, what's the word for it? Oh, gosh. All I'm saying is you don't want to startle people unnecessarily, Okay. We always warm up the fact that sometimes we'll have things we have to talk about. I would always like to try to do the right thing. I do these little in-between moments where we can have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. There are some people, they, 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 they've had a hard day. The last thing I want to do is be yelled at, okay? I know there's a lot of us have probably had some sleepless nights lately, okay? So it's okay to take some time off, take a day off. Give yourself the ch chance to do that. I don't think we do that enough. I think we have to be able to manage our time differently and get a schedule. Get in a schedule you know realistically you can live with. But this is like life stuff. I'm, sometimes I wonder how much of the stuff that we talk about when we should be emphasizing on simple things like let's make sure we get the fish fed, the dog fed, and, and go get our chores done, and let's go out and go on a walk, and, or let's go out and spend some time doing this. Okay, let's not talk about this right now. Or let's go do some activities. Let's go on an outing. Let's go and talk about something that is probably a little bit more edifying. That I can get. The topics we've been tackling are very, very hard to avoid. And sometimes I think we feel really guilty at times for things we're not supposed to feel guilty about. Okay. It's okay. We need to relax once in a while. We hit on some really hard topics. I get it. It's not an easy that's not easy for me to uh, have oftentimes even address. It takes a lot of strength to hit these topics. So everyone, we need that many more breaks, okay? We need to rest. We need to take it easy. We need to take a shower. We need to be extra good to ourselves. Self-care, resting up, that, that kind of stuff is important. But when people just go off on each other because they're upset about something, I'm not purposely trying to upset you. These are some of the things that you're talking about. You could disagree on a lot of things. On principle, though, you can go on anyone's channel and attack them for their views. But I have to tell you, after a while, you have to, I have to close the door on it. I'll give you an opportunity to state your point, okay? I don't want to sit here and argue with people. There are plenty of people with different views than me. I get it. I, I don't go on your channel. I don't... I don't agitate you on purpose. If you're agitated, that's not something I did. You don't have to come here. That's a thing. You have the free will to choose how you live your life and think for yourself and do for yourself. You have free will. This is not about pointing out uh, and, and putting you on a guilt trip. You have free will. You, the one thing you have is the free will to just choose what you want to do. I am not the Holy Spirit. I'm just speaking on things that are important to people that listen to my channel and the people in my circle. Okay, do we like to take a day off? Oh, yeah, we love to take a day off. We like to take a couple more days off. We like to go on a few more vacations. And, and listen, by the time we get back from vacation, we're going to be prior reprioritizing some things anyway. And up until this point, I am not thinking about all the things that some of you all talk about either. Because at the end of the day, I want to shut my head. I want to shut this stuff off. I can't look, listen to this stuff every day either. But we have to be able to address it, okay? I'm just pointing out some things that a lot of times what we do is we don't allow ourselves a way out. So what every, every problem, we have to have a good exit strategy. And sometimes I got to diffuse these debates. 
I just make sure that I'm responding to you. If you want to respond to my emails and it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like it makes any sense, I'm going to ask you here on the on the channel. Uh, please, please go ahead and bring some comments. I'm going to start addressing them instead of doing this, you know, backhanded, backwards. I'm not here to point put you on the spot. I just think that some people, just because we disagree on how things are done, you can't correct me with incorrect statement. With I mean, you better make sure you get your information correct before you respond, okay? I vet my information, that's, that's the issue. I don't go on snoops to look for my uh, update, my status on what I think. I, I, that, that's one thing, we learn to think for ourselves. We don't need snoops to do our thinking. I go do my homework, that's called doing research. And if you do your own research, you can verify it from somebody else. I'm just speaking to some things, maybe I need to sit back and think some things through. But on this issue, no. So I hope you all have a great, wonderful afternoon because I'm not going to speak on every issue. I didn't say I was the almanac. I never said I knew everything. I'm just speaking to something specifically. But when you're wrong, you're wrong, and I'm going to point you out. I hope you all have a great day.